Hello, everyone. I'm having a wonderful time. We're the hosts of From Milwaukee to Nashville. This podcast is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. The only good part about this show. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Because when I get into talking about this game tonight, you would rather, well, I'd rather gouged out my eyeballs with a spoon than watch tonight's game. They suck that bad. No defense, no offense. Their offense turned into them playing more defense. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. Anyway, um, I don't have the energy. All right. So shots on goal in the first period, Boston outshot Nashville 18 to 8. In the second period, Nashville outshot Boston 10 to 7. In the third period, Nashville outshot Boston 10 to 8 or 5. And in total, Boston outshot Nashville 30 to 28. In the faceoff circle, the Bruins were better at 62% to the Predators, 38%. On the power play, the Bruins went 1 for 4, the Predators 0 for 3. In penalty minutes, the Predators had 18 to the Bruins, 6. Hits, the Predators had 36, the Bruins 20. Blocks, the Predators had 15, the Bruins 12. Giveaways, the Predators had 9, the Bruins 8. Starting the first was Brad Marchand with his 17th with an assist from Peter or uh, Patrick. Oh, God, I don't even know. Bergeron. Wow. Well, there's been so many Bergerons. I bet fault. Patrice Bergeron. I knew a Patrick, a e. Edward. Yeah, there's been enough of those playing hockey. Anyway, scoring in the second was Craig Smith with his fourth with an assist from Charlie McAvoy. Then Patrice Bergeron scores his 19th with an assist from Lindholm, his 29th, and Hall, his 19th. That was scored on the power play. Derek Forbert scores his fifth with an assist from Fogliato, and uh, Grizzlick, his Grizzlick, his 17th. Then Tre- Frederick scores his 11th with an assist from Felino, his 15th, and have, uh, Lindholm, I think that's Hampus Lindholm, his 30th. Yep, Hampus Lindholm. All righty. Preds lose 5 nothing. Crap list, the whole damn team. Minus Jews, who had five saves shorthanded. Yeah. Tells you all you need to know. Right. Then you know, got a game misconduct. Don't know what that's for. Probably going to get suspended. Um, We lost yet again. Blues are cur- currently beating New Jersey 3-2. to two. They win. They climb within two points of, or a point of the Nashville Predators. Um, if the only thing saving the Preds' playoff hopes at this point, I hate to admit it, is the fact that we're not the only ones stumbling. Right. Because Edmonton's, or sorry, Calgary's four, four, and two in their last ten. And Minnesota's three and three six and one in their last ten. Yeah. Here's my thing: we go play Florida tomorrow. Or we play. When do we play Florida? Saturday. Saturday. Florida beat Washington six to three today. Um.
Smart the chest. I don't see us beating Florida. I don't either. I don't see us beating Minnesota either. We lose to Minnesota, and, and I'm going to just say this. We lose to Minnesota on Sunday. Um, note this. The Admirals play at three, so uh, big games for us this weekend. But uh, let's see, what do we got left? Let's take a look. Nashville's scheduled for this month. All right, we got Florida. Then we got Minnesota, like I said. Then we play Vancouver, San Jose, Arizona, and then Pittsburgh. Um, before the deadline, we also play Florida again on the second. Yeah. Humble opinion. What do you think? I say tear it down. Yeah, me too. If you can't beat Minnesota, tear it down. By the way, uh, John, don't tr worry about trying to watch Minnesota's game. Okay. Valley supports Wisconsin. So it's blacked out for you. Yeah. So, see what happens, but Got a message for Preds fans, though. You don't like what you're seeing? Stop going. I know they're your team. They can be your team. Cheer from home. Don't like what you're seeing? Don't pay to go. Season ticket holders, tell them to shove it. You don't like what you're seeing? Make the front office feel it. In the wallet book. It's the only way you make changes anymore. The dollar makes the almighty value. It doesn't matter how much they play like crap. If you keep showing up, they don't need to change. I'm not going to lie to you. Were the, were the admirals, I'd, I'd probably do the same thing. Not saying that, you know, I condone that behavior. But I, I am saying that it might be a necessary behavior if things don't get better. And if they keep saying that this is, this is, oh, we're doing great, we're doing great, we're doing great, we're doing great. Um, This was not great. No. This was horrible. By what I gather, all right, so they had what, seven shots of the second period? Yeah. Well, no, Nashville had 10, Boston had seven. Okay, so Boston scored three goals on seven shots. Yeah. That's not good at all. No. What 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 point do you sit there and go, this isn't working? Whether it's Poyle, whether it's Hines, whether it's the rest of the flipping coaching staff. But for whatever reason, whenever Admirals players go up there, ready for the NHL, you guys want them up there, and your guys send them back broken, and we have to fix them again. Then they come back here, they go back up there, they play well for a few games, and then they're broken again. You want the truth? There's the stinking truth. The truth is that our system sucks right now, and it solely sits at the NHL level. Yes, I also know that it's a contract year for the Admirals, and in no way am I a representation of the Admirals. I'm just their fan base, pissed off because I'm sitting here spending my time putting my money in your pocket, being a fan of your team, and you suck. Putting my effort, my family on the, on the side to, to take time away from my family for this, now, maybe that'd be selfish of me, but you know what? Uh, a 5 nothing loss, uh, barely making the playoffs when you said, oh, we're a playoff team this year. Where? On paper? 
What paper? Oh, we beat the Sharks. Everybody beat the Sharks this year almost. You lost to Arizona. Tonight, an AHL team could have beat this team. Yeah. I'm not pulling no punches. They played like crap. They didn't back check. They took no bodies. They didn't protect juice. They didn't do anything. They didn't play the boards. They didn't. The O zone, D zone, offensive zone, neutral zone, uh, zone exit, neutral zone exit, and, and offensive entry points, all of those sucked. The only guy that showed up to play was Soros. And by this, I mean no means to the Predators logo, front office, outside of the POIL, outside of POIL, the front office, I mean no disrespect to you guys, but we suck tonight. We've sucked for the last few games. We haven't won since the All-Star break. Yet we're still four points out of the playoffs. And wonder why that is? Because every team in front of us sucks right now. Right. Like I just said. Oh, look, Calgary's about to lose it to Detroit. <sighs> Who? Out of the playoffs, or at least out of the playoff picture, for the most part. Actually, Detroit's won four straight. Kudos. Um, Calgary's still four points back. So is Minnesota. But I mean, goals for versus goals against differential is a minus fourteen this year. Would you like to know the teams? Oh, look, L.A.'s in second place with a differential of minus one in the Pacific Division. The Buffalo Sabres have a plus 12. I want to talk about crap. We signed Phil Forsberg to an insane amount of money for him to be con inconsistent like he always has been. Ryan Johansson's getting paid $8 million to be a third-line center on any other team. Mikel Granlin plays like crap. He's a minus 20-something, or minus 10-plus, I would say, 10-plus this season. You want to talk about crap? We're playing like utter crap, and there's nobody standing up and saying anything, so I will, I guess, since all of the little media types in Nashville are a bunch of scared little pansy asses. And yes, I know I'm swearing in my own podcast. And no, I don't care. Somebody's got to say something. This is unacceptable. You're talking about a team who just got beat by one of the worst teams in the league who can barely pay their rent for their own building and forgot to pay taxes. Treating I mean, Everybody's treating them like a happy Gilmore meme. Your grandma forgot to pay her taxes for the last decade. We can't even beat that. I I get it. I get it. Anybody can beat you on any given night. But I'd have expected you to want, if you want to prove you were a playoff contender, this ain't it. Tonight you played like you were you were at the bottom end of a barrel tanking. It was the last game of the year. And you if you lost, you got to play. Or you got the number one pick. That's that's how you played tonight. Like nobody cared. Not the coaching staff, not the players, except for Soros, whose contract's up in two years. I see him leaving. I see a lot of these guys leaving. If things don't change. Look, I get it. Hines is a player-friendly coach. 
the, the coach's job isn't to be the player's friend. It's to coach them. Poyle, your job isn't to be your friend friends with the coaching staff either. Your job is to make sure they're doing their job because you your job's on the line now because of him. Because you fired Peter Laviolette after taking you the farthest you've ever been. Because he had a bad month. Heinz has had two bad years and you keep letting him have a fucking job. This team has been on the verge of missing the playoffs for the last three seasons. You got eliminated in the playoff bubble by the Arizona Coyotes. You want to sit here and say that these fan base isn't this fan base doesn't deserve to be frustrated? Damn right we do. Damn right this fan base deserves it. We have every right to be angry. You had a Hall of Fame goaltender in Pecorino, and you did nothing with it. You trade P.K. Subban when he comes in and gives you everything he's got playing the best hockey of his whole career. And you trade him away. What do you have to show for it? Nothing. Santini gone, got nothing for him. Let's see. What else did you trade? Oh, yeah, that's right. You got... um. A second round pick in which you traded away for a guy who still isn't in America yet. That's right. That oh, that would be right. That was Zachary LaRue, the guy who suspended for 10 games for spearing a 16-year-old. Now here's the thing. I'm not there. I'm not that one to speak on it. Like I said in the last video, I don't know every part of the details. I did see the video. But I wasn't right, right there to see what happened. There are very many things that a video cannot catch without seeing it firsthand. From a different angle. And this happened from behind him. So you know that you can't see in front of the person of what they're doing. So there's that. What else are we going to do? Look, I've, I've, I've absolutely had it with this, this shit. This shit's got to change. What point do you sit there and go, well, if things don't become more favorable, we might be sellers, but I know we're not buyers. Way to sit on the fence. Just going to do nothing? You've screwed up so bad, you can't do anything. Here's the thing. And then I'm going to say this, and this is about as bluntly honest as it can be, get. David Poyle, you have walked yourself into a spot where if you start winning, you 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 lose your job anyway. Pines too. Not only that, but here's the thing. It doesn't matter even after the, the, the trade deadline, which is what? As of tomorrow, two weeks away? Why? Why? Why keep on to players that you're just going to have for a couple more years? You know, looking at it, you have Duchesne for many, many more years. You have all these players. You have all these things. And yes, I know there's going to be a part two of this video. And if you think I'm kidding, I'm not. I ain't done yet. I said I said in an early meeting that I was going to rip this team from the ground up, and I do not care. I love the Preds. Don't catch me sideways on that. I love the Preds. They are my they are my, are my favorite team in the NHL. But in order to have a favorite team, you also have to be a critic of your favorite team. Because for anybody. Tell me that you can't criticize your own team? You're wrong. The Preds got dog walked today by a professional hockey team with a professional coach, with a professional style, with good management and a good ownership. Now, do I think the Preds have bad ownership? No. Do 
Do I think the Preds have bad management? At times questionable. Do I think that it stems from higher above the GM position? Negative. I don't think it stems from that. What I do think is, is that eventually Nashville is going to have to get away from that whole uh, fatally, fatal love attraction that is David Boyle. Because David Boyle has been the only GM of the Nashville Predators since 1998. And some new blood might be useful. I'm not saying that Boyle hasn't done anything because we wouldn't have got this far without him. We wouldn't have got to the cup, wouldn't have had all these great players. The relationship with Milwaukee wouldn't be as good as it is without David Poyle. So for that, I give him credit. What I cannot give him credit for is the Kyle Turris trade, firing LaViolette, keeping Hines, trading away Subban. Yes, and I know you traded away Subban so that you could get Duchesne. I know. Trust me, I know. I know that that is the sole reason why. Problem with that is, is when you have that and things go sideways like that, like trading Ryan Ellis for Philip Myers and Nolan Patrick, then flipping Nolan Patrick to the Vegas for Cody Glass. And now all of that you have to show is Cody Glass. Outside of the fact that you have now Ryan McDonough out of that with a trade of mishmash. So, I mean, and here's the thing to say that McDonough hasn't been a valuable asset to this team would be a lie. So, but Nino Niederreiter's under impressed at this point. And here's my thing. Trade him while he's got value. At home, trade him while he's got value. Johansson, trade him while he's got value. Sissons, trade him while he's got value. Look, I love these players, and I, I wish they could stay. But here's the thing. We're not a playoff team. Rebuild, retool, start from scratch. I understand that the frustration is an ultimate high. I understand that, you know, that things aren't going the way for Nashville that they should be this year. But to put it all on the players is insane. To put it all on the coaching staff is insane. This is a collective group problem. I think that that's that's true. I wouldn't be surprised that next season I didn't see a 30% player turnover. All right. I wouldn't be surprised to see Janot go. After this year, who would want to play here? Every player wants to win. I wouldn't sign with him right now. I'm not saying that because I hate him. I'm saying that because if I was a player, I'd want to win. And if I'm showing up every night and the only guy who wants to win... Like Soros, that's kind of sad. And it is very frustrating and very depressing and very angering. Much like why I'm here doing this podcast, because I'm frustrated and I'm angry. And I told John that I was going to be a loose cannon. <laughs> Trust me, it could. It, if it was just me, I'd have said what I really want. but I'm just going to give you a little snippet of it. We are not a playoff contender team. We're not even sniffing at it at the current moment. Here's my thing. For many, many years, I have always believed in Nashville. I've stood with Nashville. I've stayed up till three in the morning watching Nashville games in the playoffs where Mike Fisher scores the OT winner against the Sharks. I was there when Chris Mason came to Milwaukee. I was a Preds fan then. Martin Erat was one of my favorite players. 
I will go to my grave a Preds fan, as well as a Sabres fan, because those two teams have been my focus, much like John with his avalanche and the Preds. Now, at one point, they weren't in the same division. Right. <laughs> I'd so be happy to see that happen again. Uh, <laughs> Um, but that would mean us going into a division with Tampa. And, eh. <laughs> um, I just want to say, if you can't understand what I'm saying at this point, I think it's time to clean house. And I'm frustrated. And if the Preds lose on on Saturday, you'll just be seeing an Admirals video. The Preds lose on Sunday, you'll just be seeing an Admiral's video. 